Hello and welcome back to Tales of Lumen. Today we're talking about Game of Thrones. One specific episode of the Game of Thrones series goes by the name of The Mountain and the Viper. It's the latest episode. So that said, if you are not all caught up on Game of Thrones, if you haven't watched the latest episode, it's episode 8, turn back now. Close this video, stop watching. I give you permission. This is not something you want to spoil for yourself or for anyone else in your life. It's not worth it. Those of you, however, that have seen the latest episode and want to discuss it with me, stay. Stay a while and listen. I'll give you a moment. Okay, so, The Mountain and the Viper. This was some of the most difficult TV I've ever had to watch. One of the most intense episodes of any series I've ever seen. All because of like, I don't know, five minutes of it. It was crazy. Not even joking. It was crazy. So I'm going to start at the beginning. They kind of put the fight between the mountain and Oberyn off for like super long. Okay, they did everything else before that. And the funny thing is, they managed to jam so much progression, story progression, character progression, all sorts of progression into this one episode that it's mind-boggling seriously and the thing is the thing is is that people forgot about everything else that happened in the episode when that last scene started and ended so there was the story between like of reek theon greyjoy and that guy, Ramsay Snow, oh man. That is the most annoying part of Game of Thrones, to me at least, right now. I can't stand watching that. Seriously, it's bad. It's bad. And I'm hoping, you know, hoping upon hope that Mr. Theon Greyjoy is actually, like, pretending to be Reek. And that perhaps when he sees a gap, he'll take it, a proper gap. But I just don't know. Now from the start, I always thought to myself that this guy... No. No. He was weak-willed. He just didn't sit right with me. So I'm not surprised that he was broken by this guy who tortured him. Anyway, that whole thing happened there where he managed to sneakily take the fort for those guys. Anyway, I wasn't really interested in that. Then there was the whole story with Peter Baelish, Sansa, the murder, and all the other stuff involved. So where she confessed everything, and where she transformed herself. <laughs> that, was, that was also a pretty big thing in this episode. A lot of people were talking about it, okay? I actually saw her coming down those stairs and I was like, okay, wait, who is this? At first I thought it was Melisandre, the fire lady. Then I thought to myself, okay, it looks a bit like Catelyn Stark. And then only did I see, okay, that's Sansa. What? It was strange. Strange seeing her like that. Then there was the Hound and uh, little Arya. Still the best of the lot. I mean, they are my favorite storyline to follow along with Brienne of Tarth who didn't feature in this one her story is also interesting but their story progressed significantly they arrived at the gates outside of the castle that Sansa was in if I'm not mistaken that's where they arrived right that's big if Sansa and Arya get together again then you got like this powerhouse up in the north at least where I don't know names are concerned Big fan of that whole series that's going on up there. Because they're all separate. 
okay? Big fan of that. I do like Lord Peter Baelish and all the schemes he's got going. It's always fun to watch. And you're never quite sure about him. Never quite sure. Always fun to watch. Then there's Daenerys, Khaleesi and her whole thing that's going on. A lot happened there as well. We saw that Grey Worm was in fact interested in ladies. Somewhat. I mean, who wouldn't be? The lady is interesting, is beautiful, she seems like a great character. Then Sir Jorah got kicked out as well. Don't know what to say about that. I am a huge fan of Sir Jorah. I think he's one of the coolest characters in the series. It's a pity. I'd love to, you know, know where he's going to go next. It's going to be fun to see. I hope they focus at least a bit on him. I guess the fact that he was kicked out was justified and all that, you know. He did some bad things. But it seemed like he was fully committed and devoted to the cause. But still, he was kicked out. Better kicked out than killed. Okay. I say that's always a good thing. Especially in a series like Game of Thrones. Especially in a series like Game of Thrones. Then what else was there? There was the wall and everything that was happening there with the wildlings. So they raided the town, the girl survived, we saw some compassion from Ygritte. 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 The redhead. She was nice. To the fat guy's wife. I can't remember his Sam? I always think Samuel Gamgee. Just because they remind me of each other. But anyway, is his name even Sam? I don't know. Okay, there was some progression there as well. But... None of this mattered. It was all just overshadowed by the mountain and the viper. And when that started, I immediately had a sinking feeling. I knew something bad was going to happen. Because it's Game of Thrones. They like to, to make you love characters and then just crush them. And I loved that character. I did. I did. Prince Auburn. <sighs> the Red Viper of Dawn. He was amazing. He was, wasn't he? I hope I'm not the only one that thought so. Him, his wife, everything that was going on with him. <sighs> his wife. Great character. And the better fighter of the two. He beat the mountain. Fair and square, but then there was this lesson that needed to be told. His pride and his rage got the better of him. You know, he had the dude on his back. He had stabbed him in the chest. Hamstringed him. <sighs> it was done. It was done. Then he just got too close. And that was it. Poof. <laughs> that scene... The fight was amazing, beautifully choreographed, so great, but I didn't see it coming. I didn't see the way the episode ended coming. I'll talk about the other implications in just a second, but I didn't see that skull crushing moment coming. I thought, yes, this is it. For once, the good guys are going to win. A small victory, sure, but they're going to win. wasn't meant to be it just wasn't i even thought to myself okay this is it this is where i stop watching game of thrones i'm done i'm done i don't know why i do this to myself because one of my favorite characters in the series just like that poof gone <sighs> puddle of blood and guts and bones on the floor i said to myself you know that was it and you know you're thinking to yourself when that happened at that very moment you are thinking oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god that didn't just happen oh my god that did not just happen you're not saying that okay you're sitting there staring at the tv or screen or whatever you're watching it on speechless <laughs> and then you're disgusted then you're shocked Appalled, whatever else. That doesn't matter. It's bad. I can't believe that that happened. I didn't know, okay? I don't read the books or whatever. 
But to me, that was much, much, much worse than anything else that had happened in the show before. Much worse than the Red Wedding. Much worse. Much worse. Because that character was such a sweetheart. You know? He was, a, he was a ladies' man, a man's man. He was everyone's man. He was just a great guy. Amazing fighter. Interesting to watch. You know, you had that beautiful wife there that now who even knows what's going to happen to her. He was doing this for a much better cause. Much better reason than many other characters have ever, you know, even thought of considering in this show. This was just... The show itself, taking like the whole idea of good, <sighs> triumphing over evil, and just like squashing it, or should I say squashing it, <laughs> and then there are obviously the implications of all of this, what happens to little Tyrion? Little Tyrion, oh man, that's bad. What happens to him after all of this? Because he's now sentenced to death. Now, I don't see them killing off Tyrion Lannister. He's going to make it out somehow. He will be saved somehow. Who knows, maybe Jaime Lannister will do something. Because Jaime Lannister has been on the up and up. All in all, though, that episode was... The most difficult episode I've ever had to watch of anything in my life. And it saddens me greatly. It does. It does. I even went and followed Prince Auburn on Twitter. Because I don't want to lose touch with him. I don't. I don't want to lose touch with him. Why would I want to? So please tell me what you thought of the episode. I'm not going to do this about every Game of Thrones episode ever. This one specifically just... It crushed me. It did. It did. Tell me if at all it affected you. Tell me what you thought of it. Tell me if that was the end of Game of Thrones for you, because I seriously, seriously considered stopping. But I can't, okay. I can't. Now I'm rooting for little Arya Stark. Now I'm rooting for Tyrion Lannister. Brienne of Tarth. And all the other goodies in the show. Because one day, they will have a victory. Maybe not a huge one. Maybe not even a big one. But a victory nonetheless. Let me know what you thought of it. Please, leave those comments. <sighs> Happy that.